But he was a bunny young lad, a brisk young lad, and a bra young lad. Well, but he was a bunny young lad, come seek any day woo. It gives me great pleasure an honor to be here I'm with you. I'm using the digital platforms. Um, this is from Gerlach Museum, who are watching online. Which brought the power of intangible culture. Um, for those who don't know, this is uh, the Reaper. So welcome to the Symposium on Intangible Cultural Heritage. We're very proud to host this event, and it is the first of its kind in the UK, so it's a very momentous occasion. Today is about bringing people together from around the world to look at what's happening here in Scotland, the best practice, but also to share ideas around intangible cultural heritage and to move global thinking forward. I am passionate about Scotland's culture and heritage, and Scotland possesses a wealth of living traditions. We work hand in hand to realise the future we want for all. We think that it's very groundbreaking, it's a very great opportunity uh, for UNESCO to be here to witness this symposium that is highly relevant and it's a very great contribution in terms of the dialogue and intangible cultural heritage um, and identities, sustainable and community development. So we think that it's amazing and we want to commend Museum Gallery Scotland for, for this initiative. We commissioned a provocation piece from Janet Blake Dr. Janet Blake, who was actually one of the key authors of the 2003 convention, so internationally known as a key thinker, and then she was our keynote today. This is a matter, as so often in human rights, of societal dialogue. And then we assembled six um, presentations um, with speakers from around the world, but also two speakers from Scotland talking about grassroots projects here in Scotland, such as the Coastal Rowing Project, and then the Galgale Trust um, actually working within a community here in Scotland in Govan. Uh, but we pretty much just have three things we like to provide. And I think that what's very important is to try and broaden this idea of ICH so that one can involve as many communities as possible. What was poverty here, the lack of opportunities, and building on intangible cultural heritage opened up that opportunity. Because we believe that if the idea behind the convention is that cultural diversity is important, then it should not only be in an international level of intangible heritage, but we should also have this diversity within our territory. No one can say intangible cultural heritage isn't for them if they're a human being. We have performances throughout the day of traditional cultural practices here in Scotland. So we've had Gaelic singing, we've had Scots singing, we've had storytelling, and we'll have the Galoshans um, Theatre performing this afternoon. We're also live streaming the whole day. So we have an international community who are participating with remote questions. So it's a very interactive day and all these other things which again have their loaded. After lunch we split into groups uh, in the various tables and, and uh, there were various discussions happening on various aspects that uh, about ICH. I think there was general agreement that just recognising and celebrating cultural differences is as important as anything. What was in people's heads was a very important part of our heritage. And I really welcome the fact that today um, it was given a stamp of approval by no less an organisation than UNESCO. We had heard inspiring presentations, different opinions about the role of intangible cultural heritage, living heritage in the, in the development of communities. And I think they will take away even more importantly the rich nest of Scottish um, heritage, intangible cultural heritage. I know what I will take away. I will take away the Gaelic singing, the Galoshians' performance, and all the tastes of, of intangible cultural heritage that exists in, in, in this society.